Portland was in the headlines yesterday. <laughs> uh, the Blazers, that is. The Winterhawks might win one. The Blazers <laughs> yes. were in the headlines. Uh, Chris Mannix of uh, Sports Illustrated, good friend of the radio show out here. He's always given us some time and hops on from time to time when he writes a profile on a player or the organization itself. He made quite the waves in Portland. Uh, we know the Blazers did not pick up the contracts of Scott Brooks and Rodney Billups. They lost, uh, they lost Steve Hetzel. To Brooklyn. We talked about that earlier this week. We did. So now they're down three assistants. Uh, was on Sunday no big deal. And yesterday, Chris Mannix said maybe it is a deal. He tweeted the following. Teams are monitoring Chauncey Billups' situation in Portland. League sources tell SI now. The Blazers are rebuilding and just parted ways with two assistants, including Billups' brother, Rodney. If Billups and Portland split, Billups would quickly emerge as a candidate for other jobs. <laughs> So I did hear a lot of that yesterday, um, and I'm not suggesting it's the wrong response. Uh -huh. His winning percentage is like 320. Yeah, he is 81 and 165. He's going to lose 55 to 60 more games next year, so that's going to drop you. That might it's going to go into the twos. His win total high is 33. Yeah, 33. Thank 33 you. 33 is his high win total. Um, I heard a lot of what you just did. And my kind of only response, not that I disagree with the response, it's more like, have you followed the NBA? <laughs> There's bad coaches everywhere. Who is being run by the L.A. Lakers right now? Uh, or who who is running the L.A. Lakers? <laughs> Jeannie Buss. No. Who's running the Lakers? LeBron James. Yeah. He's going to hire J.J. Redick as his head coach. What uh, what agency does LeBron shadow own but like can't publicly admit it? Good old Clutch. Who represents Chauncey Billups? I'm assuming Clutch. Who's looking for a coach? It's the Lakers. Okay, so like the idea that Chauncey is not ha it has no interest, it might be true, and I don't think he should, but the idea that it doesn't exist and we're just laughing and suggesting that's stupid is kind of ridiculous to me. I've watched the NBA enough to know sure. teams make dumb decisions every year. They do. You're not wrong about that. We Jason hired a guy, quite literally, with <laughs> no real experience. <laughs> we did it ourselves. That just resumed his way into the lead assistant job in the Clippers, and we said, here you go. It's a five-year deal. <laughs> Dude, I, uh, you're not wrong there. I just I had the reaction of wondering where, where is who's the leaker here? Who's who's? No, I think it's pretty easy. Is it is it Billups yes. and his agent that's leaking this? Is it the Blazers? Because the Blazers also have this weird phase right now, where they they feel like they're going to be the bad guy. We did this. We did the same thing with Damian Lillard. We don't want to be the bad guy. We can't be the ones that trade him away. We can't be the villain in the room. So let's come out for two years and lie about what we're going to do, and then eventually we're going to make the situation so bad. Like locking George out of his, you know, his his bathroom and his office in Seinfeld, that he's gonna have to quit his job. Lillard demands a trade. We're not the bad guy. He's the one that did it. I feel part of me feels like we're kind of doing the same thing right now. Like we want to fire him, but we don't have the balls to do it. We don't think he's a good head coach. We just turfed his brother and didn't renew his contract, and now we're coming out saying, well, all these other teams have ideas. You know, we're rebuilding. He's too good for us. We don't need him. You're probably right in the end that it is Billups. But I do want to say something though. Go you, ahead. You deserve a lot of credit for this. What do I deserve credit for? You and I have been in lockstep on a couple of things, but one of them that you brought up, and I just I couldn't have agreed more, is the weird mixed messaging that has come from this organization for however long it's been going on, but especially recently. I would argue when the water bottle started. <laughs> they did exit interviews, and they had the general manager set up at exit interviews and say, like, we're not good. We're in a rebuild. This is, we're a long ways away. It's going to take us time. Give him credit at least for that. He lied to my face for two years about going on with Dame, but at least give him credit for that. Yeah. Then the head coach steps up and says, you know, we're pushing for a playing spot next year. I'm ready to compete. I'm ready to win. <laughs> yeah. You just, what are we? And, and there were a lot of people that when you brought up, and I agreed with you, that there's a communication error here. Mm -hmm. Well, who cares? What's the big deal? It doesn't matter. Who cares if the message is on the same board? Here we go. Like, this is what happens when you don't communicate and you're not on the same page. It's likely coming from Billups. I, I do chuckle at the notion of him getting another job. The guys won 81 games in three years in Portland, I, two of which were not supposed to be tanking years. Yeah, they he came been, here to compete. <laughs> they, <laughs> he was the, supposed to be the savior. Fire Terry Stotts. Let's bring in Chauncey. He'll save everything. Uh, but I, I do think after three years of this, the way he was greeted, the way he was hired, the person who hired him, but please tell me Jody can do no wrong, 
it's time for everybody to start over. This would be the best uh, solution for everybody involved. Yeah, I, I don't know if it was Buck, if it was uh, Meringue. I don't know who posted on Instagram that Billups thing, but I commented, let him leave. Let him leave. Let him go. What? I'm Scott Hall. Ooh, I'm scared you're going to leave. From what, a 21-win season? Yeah, we're a decade away from relevancy. You said something funny, and I, I, if you're not watching on YouTube, you didn't see me, but I started kind of giggling because I'm texting with a, mu- a buddy of ours sure. that, that follows the Blazers. You could probably guess who it is, and I, I'd say, yeah. Shoots me a text yesterday. We had text earlier in the day, and then he texted back, circled back hours later and says, I think it was from Billups. I've come to the conclusion. And I said, wait, who did you think it was from? I was like, well, I, you know, I wasn't sure. And then he gives me some evidence that suggests that Mannix and Billups have a relationship prior because of Twitter. Mm-hmm. And I said, I always thought it was Billups. I don't know where else it would have come. And he says, yeah, but I think it's coming from him himself. And I said, yeah, he doesn't want to be here. Uh, they don't want to fire him. And I quite literally wrote, it's Dame 2.0. Make him ask out, yeah. cut his brother, force his hand, and I'll give Mike Richmond credit of this, called it a shadow firing. It absolutely is. Walk him into the plank, walk him to the plank, and then like, well, hey, he jumped off the boat. I don't know what happened here. And I don't know if it's, you. you what did you say, scared or or Not whatever. having the balls are just to fire yeah, him see, and pay I, him out. I, but it's the it's the latter part yeah, there. It's the buyout. It's $5 million, I think. And maybe it's a little less for a buyout. Whatever it is. That's nothing. But for this team, it might be something. But Jody spares no expense, Brandon. But, it, but see, this is where it's interesting to me that that came out yesterday because it's clearly from Billups. Yeah. There, it doesn't benefit Portland in any way for Mannix to tweet that out. It actually makes Portland look bad. It benefits Chauncey in whatever power dynamics are going on there. The messaging of other teams would be quick to hire him. They're very yeah. interested in what Chauncey Billups could do. Maybe Phoenix would. I, I don't know. I Again, these teams don't make rational decisions at all times. They make dumb ones. See their owner in their exit interview saying, 26 other teams would trade situations with us. Okay, pal. Sure. I I don't care if he leaves. I'd help pack the bag. <laughs> I think it's quite clear this guy does not want to be developmental coach. Yeah. It's It's been clear as day. He did not sign on for a five-year contract in Portland to say, yeah, I can't wait to tank for four straight years and coach 19-year-old dudes. He did it to coach Damian Lillard. Well, but what's his coaching pedigree? His <laughs> his coaching resume dirt was what? One year. I want to get into coaching. Hey, Ty, can I be lead assistant? Sure. Okay, six months later, I'm a head coach in the NBA. Yep. He didn't grind from college to the pros. He didn't grind from the G League to the NBA to be the main guy. He quite literally walked to the lead assistant job, wore a half zip sweater, and then his former agent said, I need a coach. I'm just going to hire a guy that I know I can make any move I want because, you know, you used to be my client. Here's a five-year guaranteed contract. (laughs) That's how the process went, ladies and gentlemen. That is. And so now we've been stuck because Chauncey, it didn't work when they got here immediately, right? That team sucked and Dame got injured. Mm -hmm. Then Neil, his, you know, behind-the-scenes scumbaggery got exposed. Joe got the job. They didn't interview anybody. And Joe blew it up. Joe probably evaluated it, maybe made the right decision. I still wish he publicly wouldn't have said what he said. Maybe he made the right decision, but blew it up, and Chauncey went, oh, no, I have four more years of this. Yeah. And he still had Dame, but then Dame went nuclear, but it didn't matter because the roster sucked. Okay, here we are, and now there's one year left. The team hasn't picked up the option. I think it's quite clear this is from Chauncey, and I say, Good luck to you, sir. Get the hell out of here. I would rather have the Mark Dagnalt guy yeah. in Oklahoma City coach my young group and develop them, or as the person who texted me yesterday suggested, maybe Becky Hammond. I'd who, be all for it. Who has a, I know you can think that's just some weird cliche Portland hire. It certainly would be something that builds some good buzz for the city, but went into detail of why she's actually a good coach. She's dominating WNBA. She's probably going to three-peat this year. Her out-of-timeout plays are amazing. Her Where did she start? It wasn't the WNBA. It was with Greg Popovich. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm just throwing a name out, but I'm just saying, like, 
Hell, I'd take Don Staley, too. Didn't we inter- try and interview her as a token interview the first time, but we didn't have any intention of actually hiring her? If he wants to leave, good luck to you. Goodbye, sir. This is good day. I will Willy Wonka you <laughs> and wish you luck in your future ventures. This is why yesterday, I think, summed up why I feel the way that I feel about this organization. I just, I can't take them seriously. I can't. And anybody who tells me otherwise, I will laugh in your face. You allowed a general manager who was clearly not doing great at his job to bend the ear of an owner who shouldn't own the team that the last coach was the problem. It was a coaching issue, not a roster issue. Let me scapegoat the coach and fire him. So they did that with Stotts without making any wholesale changes to the roster. And his answer, and the owner said, that this sounds great, is in a win-now situation where you have two years left to maximize Damian Lillard to bring in a head coach who had been an assistant for one year, who was now, by the way, in multiple interviews in the last six months, acknowledged he didn't know what the hell he was doing the first oh, two years I mean, he was here. Basically, has said that he's yeah. acknowledged multiple times. I have grown exponentially as a head coach. Where the hell was that the first two years when we were supposed to be winning? You hired somebody who didn't know what the hell he was doing because he was buddies with the general manager. Like, I can't take anything this organization does seriously. I saw people drawing conclusions to the OKC coach yesterday. And saying you can't blame coaches for tanking seasons. Look at what OKC went through. There's a massive difference. First off, in OKC, his first three years there, they saw a win total increase in each year. You could see the direction that they were going with their young players. Not to mention the fact that I believe before he was hired to be the Thunderhead coach, he was their G League coach for five years. He was, he had and a good And it was reputation. all about yeah. development, yep. young players, getting guys to the league, helping guys grow. Yeah. That was his whole focal point in the organization. That's what you need now. You need somebody who can maximize the talent of young players and develop them, who doesn't care about the wins and losses, who doesn't care about the end result at the end of the game. It's all about maximizing your young guys. Chauncey Billups is not the main problem in Portland, nor is he the answer. Let him go. Start over. It is time. 